preparation is done on our first set of 75s, and now let's start to build out this first bio tool. We're going to start researching, building it out, and getting ready to put this tank together. It's an exciting day in the biotopes, so let's get started. So if you're interested in building a biotope, you've got two different ways to decide on how to get started. One, you can build your biotope around a specific fish, a type of fish you like. The other way you can do it is you can pick a certain ecosystem, a body of water, a continent, a country, specific river, stream, lake. In either case, you're gonna research where that fish is from, what types of bodies of water, what type of ecosystem, um, maybe a specific river, or if you're looking at a specific region of the world, you might look at what fish are found there. What is the, what's that body of water like? In my case, this first biotope is built around my favorite fish, the angelfish. So I started researching where are angelfish found in the wild? The research often can start online. One of the best ways I've found is to Google biogeography. Biogeography is an area of the world and what lives there. The distribution of a species, um, what is that, what's found in a body of water, for example, if you're, if you're uh, looking at fish in this case. Um, so Google biogeography of angelfish. In other words, where are angelfish distributed in the world? And you'll find that um, all along South America, particularly the Amazon River Basin. There are a lot of great websites online to look at these things. Um, the first thing you'll do when you start Googling is you'll, you might find some scholarly articles. Um, here's an article that I found. So I found this by Googling the biogeography of Petrophyllum scolari, which is a species of freshwater angelfish. And this is one of the articles that comes up. There are also many other types of websites that are built around biotopes. And you can get a lot of research on information from those sites. This is one of my favorite sites, tropicalfreshwaterfish.com. Got tons of information on biotopes. You can also look at books. Uh, one of the best books out there is Blair's Biotopes. It covers lots of areas of the world and gives uh, information on what's found there, what is that region like in terms of the environment, the types of plants, other animals. Um, also gives you some ideas on how those biotopes are recreated in aquariums. As I'm doing my research, one thing I'm looking at is what can fit a 75 gallon tank? Remember, those are my uh, display tanks, the 75 gallon standard, 75 gallon aquarium. So what's gonna fit in a 75? How many of that fish are gonna fit in a 75? What fish can go with what fish? In my case, I'm li trying to limit myself to approximately three species of fish in each tank, in each biotope. This way I can get a, in some cases, large number to really try to recreate that shoaling um, type of behavior, the interaction of the similar species or opposite species as well. What type of plants are in that biotope? Um, for me, in our first 75, we're looking to start studying the Solomon's River. Um, this is the upper Amazon. In Brazil, the Amazon River upstream from the Rio Negro is called the Solomos. If you go into Peru, it's also then called the Amazon, but I'm looking at the uppermost area of the Amazon River in Peru. So in that area, angelfish are found, several types of tetra, um, corridoras, uh, personal plecos, um, in my case, I'm using um, your traditional angelfish, the Corydoras aeneas, or the green cory, and the bronze cory. Um, looking at also using some uh, personal plecos, plecosimus, and uh, the black skirt tetra to start. Now, those species might change over time as the biotope changes, or as um, maybe I, I breed a species of fish and move that along and bring in something else that's also found in that area. 
and uh, that will be fun to do research and find out what's there. Back to our Solos River in Peru Biotope, the plants I'm using are the Amazon Sword and the Amazon Frog Bit. The Amazon Sword is often found along the river banks in the Amazon River and also a lot of floating plants in the Amazon River as well. So I'm going to recreate that riverbank look with some floating Amazon frog bed. The upper Amazon is largely a sandy or very fine gravel substrate, so we'll use that to replicate our, our biotope. The flow is low in most cases. Um, specifically in the upper Amazon, it's a white water river, which doesn't mean white water rapids or high flow. It means the water is very silty, almost looks brown. Um, you also have Black River, like the Rio Negro, where it looks really very dark and full of tannins. Um, the third type is a clear water, where the water is very clear, um, and it's not uh, darkened by tannins or silty sediments. So ours will be a white water river. Uh, the temperature is going to be in the upper 70s, by and large, and we'll let that fluctuate as the seasons go. Um, but again, low flow. We will have a large uh, uh, kind of wood structure, I'm thinking, in the deeper end of the biotope. Um, and then the kind of the river bank side of the, of the tank, we'll have, kind of build it up with some rock and some substrate, and we'll plant a bunch of Amazon swords up close to the surface of the water. This will give all the fish all large open areas to swim in, just with wood hanging roots from the uh, Amazon frog bit, and then a shallower area amongst the Amazon sores for the quarries, the tetras, and the plecos to play. We may have some rocks in whitewater um, river systems. There are some rocky areas. Um, remember, the river is coming from the Andes Mountains, so that the rock from the mountains is being kind of washed and eroded away, and that's what's causing that silty, kind of turbid type of look. The lighting in the beginning will be somewhat subdued. I'm not doing a very high light. Um, Amazon swords don't need a ton of light. Frog will be on the surface, so we won't need to uh, start with high light in the beginning. Um, we may upgrade lighting along the way, but in the beginning we're starting with the traditional Phoenix Stingray 48 inch one, um, 48 inch Phoenix Stingray light we'll have on a timer. From that one research article I found, there's a spreadsheet and you can sort it by sub-drainage. Um, these are all the spe family and species of fish found um, mostly native to that upper Amazon River, the Solomos River up in Peru. The sub-drainage in my particular area is uh, denoted as sub-drainage 18 on the map in this article. And this is a really cool and helpful spreadsheet because you can, you know, search for different types of fish, species of fish that are really found in that specific drainage area of the upper Amazon River. So very cool tool if you're looking to build out a biotope aquarium. So let's go back to tropicalfreshwaterfish.com. This is a really cool uh, website for biotopes. You see they've got all different biotopes from different continents. I'm doing a South American whitewater river. And they've got the clear water, black water. They've got Central American uh, biotopes. There's a ton of different ones with some photos even, but just a lot of really great information. And each habitat's a little bit different, which is really pretty cool. So let's check out the South American Whitewater River. And here what you get is a little bit of kind of background. It's muddy brown color in the water and the type of ecosystems, in my case, upper Amazon. Give some water parameters, what, how the tank should be set up, um, what plants are available there, what fish. Um, it's got you know angelfish, tetras, corridors, lower carids, which is like personal's plecos. Let's check out the cichlids. There's an altum. There's the Heterophyllum scalari, which is your uh, most common freshwater angelfish. And then it gives you you know 
what size tank, what's the habitat like, um, what the size of the fish, what kind of water parameters does it, does it like. Um, in terms of tetras, it uh, gives you a list of different tetras that um, are pretty general to be honest with you. These aren't all found in white water in South America, um, but it gives you a good place to start. Um, I'm going to use in the beginning here the black tetra, black skirt tetra or black widow tetra. And here again it gives you all the different information about that fish, how big it gets, etc. And you've got plants. Um, here's all the different sword, Amazon sword plants that might be found there or that would be available. So just a really cool website to start and at least get you kind of on the right path to building your biotope. Another one of my favorite websites for searching biotope information is biotope-aquarium.info. And here they've got all kinds of information about biotope aquarium design contests. Um, there's videos, which is what I really like, and then all the continents and different uh, biotope options in each continent. So for me, I'm looking for Peru, so I go to other countries on, under South America. And then you just get a big kind of catalog of videos that were taken from other countries in South America. Um, some of them are, most of them are, are underwater, so there's some footage from above water. Um, they're not all in English, but it gives you at least an idea of a little bit of information on what maybe that specific area is like in terms of you know, under the water, substrates, and so forth. Lastly, let's, let's look at biotopeaquariumproject.com. This is a fantastic website, although much of the information does require a subscription, but still you get a lot of great info. There's articles of the week. There is, um, you know, videos. They sell a lot of uh, written materials, um, but they've got different maps. Biotopes in nature is one of the links here. <clears throat> And that just shows you an article with some information and photos about a um, certain area in the world and a certain uh, ecosystem, river, uh, stream, lake, etc. Um, here is the um, kind of catalog of examples of aquariums that are specific to certain biotopes. So it gives you a little bit of ideas. I don't love doing that because I don't want to be influenced by maybe what some other people have done. So I, I don't look a whole bunch at those. One of the other cool things in here is the map. And uh, we'll get to the map here in a second. But they've got fishes, plants, invertebrates, um, a bunch of information here all centered around building a biotope. So if you go back to the home page and you click on Explore BAP, Explore um, Biotope Aquarium Project Map, you can um, <clears throat> get a little bit of an idea of the different uh, biotopes and both in nature and in the aquariums that people have submitted research on. So you can kind of go through all over the world. Here I'm looking in now kind of that northeastern Peru, and it just so happens that there is a uh, a link here <clears throat> by Heiko Blair, and um, shows you kind of the upper Amazon near the Rio Nene, and gives you some ideas, some details on um, that area. Gives you water parameters. Um, again, if you pay for the subscription, it gives you a bunch of information and a bunch of articles, um, but you can still get a little bit without the subscription. All right, so if you're interested in building a biotope or learning more about biotope aquariums, that should be a really good start for you. Uh, both those online resources and some uh, hard book material. Um, now, the thing about biotopes is we don't need to get legalistic at least on this channel, about having wood specifically gathered from Peru or leaf litter from trees that are only found in Peru. Uh, what we're looking for is close representations 
as close as we can get. As close as we can get to the plants, uh, the wood, the substrate, leaf litter, the fish themselves. Again, we're not getting necessarily always wild caught fish. Um, so it's important to keep that in mind that these are trying to represent a specific area as closely as we can with the resources that are readily available. So we don't need to uh, get too crazy about um, having a specific piece of that river or that stream or that lake in our aquariums to call it a biotope. So this is just part one and part two, we're gonna start building that tank. So be sure you subscribe, give us a like and share with your friends and we'll see you real soon. Thanks so much.